You got to see this. President Trump stands with the law enforcement and veterans in our country by signing two bills that back them up. We got to stand with our law enforcement. Check it out. Well, we're so excited to be with you today because we're going to be taking you straight to the White House where President Trump is really delivering on a, ca a campaign promise uh, that he gave when he was running for president. He wanted to make sure that his platform and his administration was one that stood with law enforcement and our military, our present military and our veterans, those who served us faithfully. And I'm so encouraged because we're going to take you to the White House as he signs these two bills. One that accelerates the benefits for the families of fallen law enforcement and firefighters. Listen, these folks are our first responders. They're the ones that get in between a lot of times danger, you know, and danger affecting us, our families, our loved ones, our neighbors. And when they fall in the line of duty protecting and serving, we want to make sure that their families are taken care of. They're standing for us. And so the president does this with this bill. And the other bill that he signs is one that helps military veterans as they're transitioning back uh, into society, into civilian life. It helps them find a new career in uh, law enforcement. This is so, so important. And we're, I'm so glad that the president did this. I want you to watch this signing. Watch it now at the White House. Thank you all. It's a great honor. And thank our Vice President for being here. Thank you. Ivanka Trump, thank you for being here. And we have a great group behind us, incredible people. Some of you are very good friends for a long time. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be with you, the men and women of law enforcement, as well as two fantastic state attorneys general who are always proud to stand by the side of law enforcement officers. That's Pam Bondi and Leslie Rutledge. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to thank also Chuck Canterbury, President of the Fraternal Order of Police, and Sheriff Greg Champagne, President of the National Sheriff's Association. Where are you folks? Good. Hello. How are you? How are you? How are you? Yes, sir. Great. Appreciate you being here. Really two great champions of law enforcement. We are here today to reaffirm our unbreakable support for the American heroes who keep our streets, our homes, and our citizens safe. And they've been doing an amazing job under very adverse conditions. We will always support the incredible men and women of law enforcement. I can speak very strongly for myself and for Mike Pence, our Vice President. Uh, we are behind you 100 percent. Every single day, America's law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, and their families make tremendous sacrifices for their communities and for their nation. When a home is threatened, when danger visits our doorstep, when innocent lives are on the line, Americans turn to their courageous officers of law enforcement because we know they are here to serve and to protect us all. They sacrifice every day to keep us safe. Many have paid the ultimate price, laying down their lives to save others. Incredible people. They're true heroes, and we will always be grateful. So I want to thank you, folks. That is so true. Our duty as Americans is to honor their service and sacrifice and to protect those who protect us. Today, I am proud to sign two laws to help fulfill that very, very sacred commitment. First, the Public Safety Officers Benefits Improvement Act will help disabled officers and firefighters and families of those who fall in the line of duty quickly receive all of the benefits they so justly deserve. People have wanted this for a long time. And I'm not just talking the people behind me. I'm talking about many people that represent the people behind me, family members and friends and people that just appreciate the work they do, which is incredible. For too long, injured officers have suffered, and the children of fallen officers have put their dreams of college on hold, while bureaucracy delayed crucial benefits, made it impossible for their families no longer. 
It's unacceptable and is going to end today. In fact, it's going to end in about one minute. This bill speeds approval times by giving state and local enforcement greater role in determining eligibility and lets applicants track the progress of their claims online. So a much, much faster situation. You're all happy with that? You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? You've been waiting for this for years. Second, the American Law Enforcement HEROES Act allows the use of federal grants to help our military veterans transition to new careers in law enforcement. America is proud of our veterans, and I think I can say a double proud or a triple proud. We love our veterans, and they're serving overseas. They're in harm's way. Uh, they are doing things that very few people would have the courage to do. And we will be and always will be incredibly proud to have them with us. And they've been with us like nobody. And we are going to be protecting them. They've been protecting us. We're going to be helping them right now. Uh, they've really been with us in terms of freedom, in terms of our rights, and will right now in terms of their rights. As President, keeping Americans safe is my highest duty, and supporting law enforcement is my unwavering commitment. I am very proud to sign these two great bills today. I want to thank everybody for being here, and if you have the bills, we'll sign them. This has been years in the making, and I will tell you that this is something that I'm very happy to be doing. So congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. This act may be cited as the Public Safety Officers Benefits Improvement Act of 2017. of the United States House. Uh, this act will be used, the American Law Enforcement Heroes Act. And that's what it is, your heroes. And so I want to just congratulate you. This one also has been a long time in the making. You're all heroes, aren't you? I think. Sure. Yeah, you all heroes? Yeah. Yes? That is fantastic. Who gets this pen, Mike? Who gets this pen? Okay. Well, thank you very much, everybody. This is slightly less controversial than yesterday, but yesterday was a big service to this country, I will tell you. Thank you very much, everybody. This is so important, and I'm so glad that President Trump really took this, this, you know, bull by the horn and made sure that, that these, you know, laws, these improvements uh, were made. Listen, you know, for the last eight years, you know, you saw, especially in the last two or three years, this disrespect for authority, this disrespect for law enforcement, and sure, there have been some situations and some instances that occurred that were not right, but overall, the great majority of our law enforcement you know, personnel, they stand in the gap against so many horrific things that most people have no idea occurs normally between the hours of you know, 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. while everyone is asleep. They're, they're a filtering service through our community making sure that our roads are safe, our neighborhoods are safe, and no one's climbing into our windows at night. And to know that, that something like this is in place now, that God forbid they were to fall, means they were to die in the line of duty, means, meaning that if they were to die while protecting me and you, that their families 
would be taken care of. How much better is that law enforcement equipped to serve us knowing that I'm, you know, I'm gonna do my job, but if I don't go home from doing my job, that I know that at least my family is gonna be taken care of. This has been long overdue. We want you to join us when we get back from this break because we're gonna to continue to talk about the amazing job our law enforcement uh, officers do as well as our veterans. It is time that we stand with those who have been willing to stand for us. Join us when we get right back from this break. I am so yeah. excited and I'm so glad Really, that President Trump took the time to make sure that yeah. these initiatives and these improvements for law enforcement, you know, are taking place. It's, it, it's so good to see such a 180 turnaround and seeing someone in leadership that's outright standing behind our law enforcement, standing behind 100% saying we're with you and to their faces saying, we stand with you, we honor you, we recognize you, and we thank you yes. for you. It's beautiful. It's called the Public Safety Officer Benefits mm -hmm. Improvement Act. And it's for disabled law enforcement, yeah. too. So it's not just those who have fallen in the line of duty, mm -hmm. but it's for those who've gotten hurt on the job. Yeah. And I, don't th I think oftentimes that this position, uh, you know, being a law enforcement is... It's overlooked. Well, it's overlooked. It's like a forgotten hero, you know? Mm -hmm. I, th I thought, you know, one time that I'm a criminal justice major, and I thought I was going to go into law enforcement, and, you know, it just it, it didn't happen. You know, yeah. God had a different plan for me, but... I didn't take all these things into consideration. I had a friend who was a customs agent, and he and I called him up one day, and I said, you know, how is it, you know, what, what's going on? He said, man, you may want to rethink this, you know, and he was really going through a process of how much, you know, how taxing mm -hmm. that position was. He was doing stakeouts and different things mm -hmm. that he couldn't tell his family. He was away for quite a, you know, amount of time, and it uh, gave me a deeper appreciation for what law enforcement yeah. go through every day. And you think about it, you only have that appreciation and perspective because you were really initially pursuing it. But for those that have never pursued yeah. it, if you, if you think about it, those that don't have family members or friends that are law enforcement, they really have no grid. And it's good to you know take that consideration and constantly keep that in the front of our minds and recognize the pivotal role that law enforcement play in our communities. Because you, you said it in the beginning of the fact that when you go to sleep at night, there's somebody patrolling your neighborhood. There's somebody patrolling your community to make sure that someone's not breaking into your yeah. room, or breaking into you know your business. You know you're grateful the fact that there is a, a a layer of safety because of those law enforcement agents. It's so important what you're saying, Steve, about law enforcement. Yeah. We have to be there. We, you can't say it enough. You, we got to be there for those who are standing for us because it's going to come to a point if we don't. There's not going to be anyone standing for us. Yeah. So we need to have a, a healthier perspective. Perspective makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. when, when I can understand and you know your pain and walk a little bit in your shoes and get a broader perspective, I can have more empathy for the things that are going on in your life, which means I could probably give you a little bit more mercy and grace. Compassion. I want you to listen, a classic. I want you to watch and see uh, Paul Harvey's tribute to the policeman. Policeman. A policeman is a composite of what all men are, I guess, a mingling of saint and sinner, dust and deity. What that really means is that they are exceptional, they are unusual, they are not commonplace. Buried under the froth is the fact, and the fact is that less than one half of one percent of policemen misfit that uniform, and that is a better average than you'd find among clergymen. What is a policeman? He of all men is at once the most needed, and the most wanted. He must be such a diplomat that he can settle differences between individuals so that each will think he won, but if a policeman is neat, he's conceited. If he's careless, he's a bum. If he's pleasant, he's a flirt. If he's not, he's a grouch. He must make instant decisions which would require months for a lawyer, but if he hurries, he's careless. If he's deliberate, he's lazy. He must be first to an accident, infallible with a diagnosis. He must be able to start breathing, stop bleeding, tie splints, and above all, be sure the victim goes home without a limp. The police officer must know every gun, draw on the run, and hit where it doesn't hurt. He must be able to whip two men twice his size and half his age without damaging his uniform and without being brutal. If you hit him, he's a coward. If he hits you, he's a bully. The policeman from a single human hair must be able to describe the crime, the weapon, the criminal, and tell you where the criminal is hiding, but if he catches the criminal, he's lucky. 
If he doesn't, he's a dunce. He runs files and writes reports until his eyes ache to build a case against some felon who will get dealed out by a shameless Seamus. The policeman must be a minister, a social worker, a diplomat, a tough guy, and a gentleman. And, of course, he'll have to be a genius because he'll have to feed a family on a policeman's salary. This is amazing. Yeah. This is amazing. I hope that you have gotten some perspective. I got you know, deeper perspective, and we appreciate all the law enforcement, men and women who serve to protect our communities really across the nation. Uh, but Steve, the, the mm -hmm. Word of God has something to say about authorities. Absolutely. And would you read Romans th sure. uh, 13 for us? Romans 13, 6 says, This is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. And if honor, then honor. These are the authorities to do you good. Yeah. And if you owe them honor, pay them honor. And so we want to honor them, and we honor them by taking care of their families when they go down. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.